this shit. Keep going. Keep going. All right. This is good. You guys all look good. You guys do. I'd like to put a redhead right there for me to feel safe. And, uh, you know, fellow, you know, they like to keep us together. They're trying to kill us off, you know, us redheads. I'm not sure if you're aware that. Do you have blue eyes, too? Fuck yeah, you do, man. Of course you do. I don't know if you guys know this, but red hair, blue eyes, that combo, less than 1% of the world's population. Yeah. Do we get any fucking minority treatment? We don't. We really don't. And I, I'm kind of sick of it a little bit. And I see a lot of fake redheads with dyed hair, and it's enough with the cultural appropriation. You know what I'm saying? We, like, I actually just got a haircut. I'm wearing my best white t-shirt. I'm fucking here for you guys, right? I showed up. I was dumb enough to wear a jacket that basically matches the background, so that'll look wonderful in 4K. Um, real shit move on my end. I did just get a haircut, and luckily, I, uh, pretty good, right? Not bad? Yeah. yeah, all right, thank you. Some of you agree, others are a little on the fence. That's okay. It's better than my last one, though. The last haircut I got was the worst haircut I ever had in my entire life, mainly because the man who cut my hair had the worst breath I've ever smelled in my entire life. So my hair was completely uneven because I was just sitting in the chair like this, just. It's brutal. I went home, and my wife was like, oh, shit, what the hell happened to your head? I then told her, and my wife, here's the thing about her, she's a nurse. These nurses are natural sweethearts. So she started to feel bad for the guy. She's like, oh, well maybe he can't help that he has bad breath. Maybe he's got like halitosis, he can't help it. And my response was, well he doesn't get to fucking cut hair for a living then, okay? <laughs> when, when you breathe and it smells like goat shit coming out of your mouth, you don't get to hover over people's necks for 40 fucking minutes at a time. You sick fuck, like what kind of like, that's an evil person right there. But that was my mistake, because I had a straight person cut my hair. What am I, new, you know? I'll tell you this right now, the era of straight people cutting my hair, whether they're a man or a woman, that is shit is over. No, you gotta get a gay guy, because the straight dudes, I don't know. Straight men, I feel like whenever I sit in that chair, they look at me like I'm some kind of rival. They're like, they give me one of these, they go, what is this, a good looking redhead? Fuck this unicorn, and start messing it up. And then whenever I have a woman, a straight woman cut my hair, I must look like a lot of ex-boyfriends. Because there's always a moment in the haircut where I'm like, real quick, who did this to you? It wasn't me. I didn't, I didn't personally hurt you. Why are you hurting me right now? No, I don't like it. I don't like when the haircut person gets too chatty. I don't like that. I mean, I look standard. Hey, how you doing? Nice day out. That's fine. But I don't like when they're just like, to like the, so what are you, I don't fucking care to tell you, okay? Like, because then it becomes a bad Uber ride, you know? It's like, you have big plans this weekend? Yeah, I plan looking good. Let's keep our hands on the wheel. Can we focus on the road? Let's just, no, you gotta get a gay guy. Gotta get a gay guy to cut your hair, especially if you're a straight guy. See some straight dudes right now thinking, I don't want a gay guy touching my hair. Number one, it's 2020, let's drop that shit, huh? <laughs> Number two, you're not thinking it through. You need a gay guy, because number one, they're gonna make you look fuckable. That's the deal, right? They're gonna send you out there looking sexy. Also, gay guys give the best life advice. Amazing life advice. I remember sitting in the chair and he was like, real quick, what kind of conditioner do you use? And I'm like, I don't know, like Garnier Fructis or some shit? I don't know. He's like, okay, okay, well that's what poor people use. Do you wanna look like a poor person? Huh? You wanna go out there looking like one of the poors? If you wanna look like a poor, then maybe don't come here. I'm like, oh my God, I, thank you so much. I, I'm learning and be sassy because I think all my teachers were sassy and that's how I learn, I feel like. That's good advice. No, because a good haircut's important, damn it. It really is. If you're like me and you don't want to see a therapist because you're like weird inside, like a good haircut will make you feel better. You ever feeling depressed? Get yourself a good haircut. No one's ever killed themselves the same day they've gotten a good haircut. That'd be a weird discovery, right? You'd walk in and be like, oh my God. He looks amazing. What happened? I don't get it. <laughs> Tied in the sides, gelled up front. Shit was going to turn around for that young man. Here's a little fun fact about me. I've got two kids, right? I've got a two-year-old and an eight-month-old. And um, most people cheer. You guys are dead inside, apparently. <laughs> it's great. I love being a dad. I do. It changes you in a lot of ways. It's changed me in ways I never would have expected to. 
Like there was a time in my life where if I would have gotten pee on me, I would have been very, very upset. <laughs> now, depending on the amount of pee, I won't even change my shirt, you know? <laughs> I'm like, that's just a little bit of pee. That's not a big deal. What is that? <laughs> this is fresh out the dryer. I'm going to wear it all day and hug everyone I see later because I don't... <laughs> That's my boy's pee, and that's some damn good pee. That's sterile, and that's some clean piss right there. Here's another fun fact about my boys. My eldest son, he was born naturally. It was a natural birth, where the little one was born via C-section. I think that's going to be a weird thing between the two of them growing up as brothers, because as we all know, the one that was naturally born, he could run for president one day. But the C-section baby, of course, cannot. Because as we all know, the Constitution clearly states you must be a naturally born citizen to run for president. <laughs> I kind of can tell who failed eighth grade social studies based on <laughs> some of those reactions, but it's all right. You know, I'm going to be throwing a lot of different gears at you, okay? We're going from Constitution jokes to some jizz jokes. We're going to have some fun with it. I got range. I got range up here. Yeah, a lot does change you. Being a parent, of course, changes you. Like, here's something about me that is, is still baffling. I'm a crier now. I cry. I didn't cry for a few decades there, you know? And, um, and now, and now I'm, I'm, I'm just, the water works all the time. Anything remotely, even a little sad, it's, it's nuts. I think it started before. My eldest son was born in February of 2017, and a few months before that, the Chicago Cubs won the World Series. And that's when I first cried. And uh, yeah, I know. And then my son was born, and on that day, I did not cry. And my wife kind of was like, mm, you don't cry for your baby being born, huh? You know? And I'm like, well, nobody told me my whole life I would never have a baby, you know? <laughs> my whole life I was told that's never gonna happen. They never said, oh yeah, you'll fucking have kids. Why wouldn't you have kids? But keep dreaming about the Cubs, right? <laughs> but no, I find myself crying, like just any, any commercial with dogs in it, crying. <laughs> even if it's not one of those Sarah McLaughlin, holy shit, save these dogs. Even if it's like a regular, this dog got a brand new thing of food. I'm like, fuck yeah, that dog did. I love that dog. <laughs> I'm so glad he's got a new blend. It's a new blend of food. He's getting salmon. Fuck yeah, dude. You know, I'm like. Any commercial with soldiers coming home? Just tears, dude, tears. But then I started crying for another reason with these soldier commercials. Because it's always they come back in this spectacular way. But I started crying for the kids whose parents are overseas and they come back just in a regular way, you know? Because television and movies make you think it's always this badass, daddy's home, you know? You know, some of them are getting phone calls being like, yeah, dude, pick me up at O'Hare at five, you know? <laughs> yeah, pick me up at the airport, gate C, and do not be fucking late. And they're like, really? You're not gonna be the surprise umpire in my little league game? What the fuck, you know? You told me. You now it changes you being a parent. I got a lot of different things I gotta worry about now, especially with two kids, and they're both boys. So I just stuff to think about. Think about bullying. You know, bullying's still a thing. People talk about bullying and all that. And I wonder, I thought to myself, because I'm super protective of my kids, how am I going to handle a bullying situation? Because I can't go beating the fuck out of nine-year-olds, guys. I looked up this. <laughs> I looked into this. They do not like that. So if someone's bullying my kid, I think I'm just going to kick it old school, and I'm going to go to the parents. I'm going to go to that, the bully's parents. I'm going I'm to do a house call. That's even more old-fashioned. <laughs> I'm going to knock on that door. Father's going to answer and be like, hey, just so you know, your son has been making life on my son very difficult. And that father's gonna be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yo, Tyler! I'm like, no, nah, nah, you don't have to get Tyler. And of course his name's Tyler because he's a piece of shit. But like, <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 you don't have to get Tyler. But I, I do want to give you this. Fucking headbutt right there. <laughs> and I come in strong. I get like the bridge of the nose. So it's like blood coming out of the nose and the mouth, blah, right? And then Tyler starts to show up and he's like, oh my God, dad. And I grab the dad by the back of the fucking head. I lift him up so he can really see the face, you know? <laughs> I go, you see this shit, Tyler? Don't ever fuck with one of my kids again. You fuck with one of my kids again, I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna have sex with your mom. That's what I'm gonna do. And I've seen the way she looks at me at parent-teacher night. She fucking wants it, dude. And my wife's not gonna care because it's about teaching lessons, right? We're a teaching family, so she's not even gonna mind. But some of you might be thinking, hey, Joe, what if your kid is the bully? Well, if my kid's the bully, I'm also gonna have sex with his mom. <laughs> no matter what, I'm getting some sex. No matter what, I'm getting some sex out of this deal. That needs to happen. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different now. I'm not, I don't drink the way I used to now that I'm a parent, because I'm a stay-at-home dad during the day, 
comedian at night. I know, jackpot, right? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that was a career option, but goddamn, am I happy I found it. <laughs> but my friends missed the old me, right? They missed the Joe that would just party up till, at 4 a.m. bars. So we go to all the 4 a.m. bars in this great city of ours. My, my headshot is on several of them, I think. I, <laughs> I tell them, I'm like, dude, it's not my life anymore. And they're like, come on, man, come out to 4 a.m. with us for old times' sake. I'm like, dude, I can't go out to 4 a.m. with you because it's 7 a.m. I gotta wake up and I gotta play trains, okay? <laughs> I gotta play trains on tracks I design. Like, I'm a fucking engineer in the morning. <laughs> we play trains, we have Dunkaroos, and we watch Arthur, and it's the best. It's the best morning every time. <laughs> I can't be out till 6 a.m. with you watching you strike out with 45 year old women. I'm done with that life. <laughs> I miss that part a little bit, if I'm being quite honest, but. Now, having two sons is really cool for a, a guy like me, because I'm a big kid at heart. I'm, I'm a big kid at heart, so having boys is fun, because I get to like, relive my childhood through them, you know? Like, the first Toy Story came out when I was like 10, and the latest one came out, and my son, my two-year-old, loves Toy Story. So I'm like playing with him, I'm like, yeah, Buzz Lightyear, he's like, my turn. I'm like, you can fucking wait. Buzz Lightyear, <laughs> woo! To infinity, you know? It's a good time. Yeah, I had to slow down on the drinking, though, because the hangovers were too much. I, I get the worst hangovers. Like, I'm a, I'm a puker, a strong puker. I sound like a horse trying to orgasm. And I couldn't figure out, like, a good cure. That's what's annoying about getting a hangover. Whenever you get a hangover, everyone around you becomes a doctor. Everyone's got their own little remedies, their own little cures. Here's what you do, you know? The hiccups are like that, too. Those are the two things, hangovers and the hiccups. Everyone stops what they're doing. They go, dude, here's what you do, right? They got, like... Remember all the dudes I grew up with? They're hilarious, but they just had the worst advice for stuff. Dude, you got the hiccups? Here's what you do. You do a handstand, you jerk off at the same time. That's what you do. <laughs> Let me know when you're gonna come. I'll say boo, we'll scare them right out of you, bro. <laughs> got you. <laughs> and hangovers are just an, as annoying. Hangovers are just as annoying because you get one, and everyone's got their own little thing. So I have one friend that's like, dude, you got a hangover? Here's what you do. You go to McDonald's, you get something greasy, it'll knock it right out of you. Sorry, if I have something greasy, I'll shit my thighs. Okay, I will. <laughs> something will get out of me, but it's not what I want out of me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Other friends are a little tougher. They're like, Gatorade and Advil, pussy, get back out there. Again, doesn't work for me. So you got to find what works for you. And I finally, after all my time on this planet, figured out what works for me. I'm going to share it with you guys all right now. Maybe it'll help you in your time of need. So here's what I do. It's a really rough night of drinking. After one of those nights, before you fully wake up, you know that trouble is on the horizon. Right? You can sense it. So I like to open up one eye first. I like to ease into it. <laughs> so I open up one eye first, and I look around the room like an angry pirate. I'm just like, Ugh. Then I open up both eyes. The vision starts to come to, and I'm like, ooh, ooh, I know where I am. This is a good start. This is a good start. I'm familiar with this room. Slept with my shoes on. That sucks a little bit, but I, I know where I am. Right? And then, as soon as I lift my head up off the pillow, I get that pain, that uh, right in the center of your brain, that horrible hangover headache. As soon as I feel that, here's what I do. I lie there for another eight, eight and a half hours. <laughs> I avoid all responsibility. <laughs> and at about 9, 9.30 at night, I have an ice cream sandwich and I get back out there and do it all over again. Because that's truly how you dominate. That's how you do it. Thank you. Here's what's annoying. I recently discovered that I've become a parent I never wanted to be. I discovered that I am the parent who says how old their kids are, not by years, but by months. <laughs> now, obviously, for my eight-month-old, I have to say his months. I can't say he's zero, you know? I, you know. <laughs> but I'm doing it with the two-year-old. I never liked it. I always hated that parent before I became a parent. I'd meet, you meet someone, they're like, this is my daughter, she's 19 months, and you're like, she's a fucking year and a half. You could just say that. You don't have to <laughs> throw math at us right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> That make me feel stupid while meeting your kid. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but now that I'm a parent, I understand why parents do that. Because there's different developmental milestones that children reach along the way, so you want to separate it a little bit. You want to give it a little distance. I, that makes sense to me, you know? And I started doing it after taking my son to the playground. He was a little over one years old when I first started doing it because of the incident I'm about to tell you guys about. We go to the playground. It's a nice day, nice little father-son bonding. And he's having fun, and he made a friend which is awesome when you have a, like a little kid like that, they make a friend that's always a good sign as a parent because you're like, oh my God, look at this. He's being sociable, he could share, he's not a sociopath, yes, you know? Because <laughs> as a parent, you have that worry that your kid might be a, a little bit of a freak, you know? You worry about that. 
I fell down some stairs in front of my kid once. He laughed for like 20 minutes. And I'm like, shit, do I, I got a little Dexter in the makings over here? What's happening, man? His daddy's in a lot of pain right now. Stop laughing. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. The kid he was playing with, this kid was dominating the playground. This kid was a little badass. He had no fear. He was going down slides head first. He was doing that Superman off the swings. He'd get wood chips on his knee. He'd be like, I don't give a fuck. I'm back out there. What's up? Nothing's slowing me down, you know? And my son was doing his best to keep up with him. He didn't realize he was disappointing me. But he was... <laughs> he Bless his little soul. He was trying, you know? But during the midst of their playing, this little, the little all-star, this little all-star's mom started to walk towards me. Have you guys ever had that where someone walks towards you and based on their vibe, your thought is, fucking no, don't. You go back that way. I don't, I please, I'm yelling at my kid. Make a new friend now, make a new friend. I don't want to talk to his mom. I got good instincts on this. Actually, that's the worst part about taking your kid to the playground. There's always people want to make friends with you. It's always these dads. They want to make friends. I'm like, again, I don't mind chit chat. Like, you see the game? Nice day out. That's fine, but these dudes, like, did you not have friends before you had kids? I had a lot of, I still have a lot of friends. I'm not looking for new ones. I'm all filled up. It's always these dorks. Like, oh, you got any hobbies? Yeah, not talking to strangers at a fucking playground <laughs> is a big hobby of mine, man. Damn, dude. You know why I took my kid here. To tire him out enough so I could go home, answer some emails, and jerk off in peace. That's all I want, man. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you right now. So I was right about my intuition about this kid's mom. Because the first thing out of her mouth was this. She goes, oh. So how old's your little one? Which doesn't seem bad on the surface, but I know what she was doing. I know what she was doing. Because I was like, oh, he's one. He's one years old. And she followed up with, oh, my son is also one. And she kind of did it in a way where it's like, my son is better than your son. That's what she was trying to say, right? <laughs> so I had to like break it down and be like, ah, let's slow down a second there. Because your kid is practically two. My son just turned one. Oh, how do I know your kid's practically two? Because he's running around telling everyone that next week he's going to be this many. Yeah, he's flashing the deuce at us. He's letting us know. Also, he's giving out birthday party invites. Are you aware of that? Yeah, we're RSVP and no, because I can tell your party's going to suck. All right, I can tell. You look like one of those moms who puts flashcards in the goodie bags. No one wants to be at that party, all right? Throw a matchbox car in there like a normal person. And then I also had a reminder. I'm like, y your kid's not going to be better than my kid. Okay, here's the, here's the harsh truth of it. My wife, she's not here right now, but she's way hotter than you. Just like so much hotter. Which means my kid is going to be hotter than your kid. And that's all that matters on this planet is who's hottest. We know that now, okay? Both of my sons, we like moisturize. We, we take, take, take like good skin care. I know they're really little, but we're not fucking around, all right? We are not fucking around. Some people are trying to make their kids athletes. I'm just going to make them as hot as possible because that's really what matters. And then she started to get a little lippy with me. She's like, well, that's my husband over there. I'm like, that's your husband, the dude on the park bench? Yeah, I've seen him. He's been on his phone this entire time. Just so you know, clearly cheating on you. This dude is clearly cheating on you. Sorry to be the one to tell you, but that's what's happening. What's that? Your daughter's here too? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see. Oh, she's in the little, in the stroller. That's your daughter? Oh, she's adorable. How old is she? Beautiful girl. No, how old? Nine months? Okay, well, my 13-month-old is going to fuck your daughter one day. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Maybe he'll bang your son. I'm cool like that as long as it's both consensual and they're happy. My kid's going to fuck your kids, lady. What do you think of that shit? My kid is going to bang your kids. So don't come over here with that attitude. Now that lady... No longer goes to that playground. No longer. <laughs> and that's how you open up spots on the swings. No more wait time, right? <laughs> Smart. Smart. Yeah, you know, awkward things. I had this happen recently after a show. It was a great show. And this woman came up to us and to a bunch of the comics. And she was talking to us and she was awesome at first. But then it took such a weird turn. I don't know where she goes. So you have two boys, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And she's like, all right, well, let me just say this. You better raise those boys to be good men. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, that's the goal of every father, right? To raise boys to be good men. I'm like, where the heck was she going with this? And then she says this. She goes, good, good. Because we don't need any more mass shooters, do we? <laughs> the fuck? Like, what? Like, like are you so, like, Calm down, lady. I mean, the one can barely hold up his head. The other one trying to get the color between the lines. Let's pump the brakes. <laughs> I'll get to mental health and firearm safety eventually, you psycho. <laughs> It's like, Jesus Christ, what an insane thing to say to someone. I did take a step back, though. I took a step back, fellas, and I realized there is some truth to the fact that over 99% of mass shooters are men. That is true. Over 99% of mass shooters are men. But they're not handsome men. 
And obviously my boys, I mean. You ever notice that? It's a lot of ugly looking dudes shooting up places. So I think I want to propose a law that both the right and left could get behind in which we just simply ban ugly men from buying guns. And I think we'll see some numbers go down, you know? It's like, dude, what do you need a gun for? To protect the family you don't have? You're fucking ugly. Come on. Right? I also want to say, looking around this room, the dudes who aren't laughing, you're suspect. Throwing that out there. I thought the nice thing about that joke was like, it's a game of chess. If you're an ugly guy, you're like, I better laugh just in case. Ha, 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 yeah, 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 I can buy a gun, right? Ah. I guess the good question would be, how do you enforce that law? I think you could tell. <laughs> Certain things you could just tell, right? It's like, you ever watch the local news and they're like, suburban high school janitor turns out to be child molester and they show his picture and you're like, no shit, look at that guy. <laughs> How the fuck did he get a second interview, let alone hired to work around kids? <laughs> Clearly he's a child molester, you know. They always look the part, right? Same principle would apply. Some ugly dude walks into a gun store. Store owner's just like, dude, I'm like, you're making this awkward for both of us now. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, I can tell it's a new haircut. The answer's still no. I don't know what to tell, like. <laughs> maybe go work out, come back in six months. I don't know, man. Speaking of which, society, it's strange these days, and I think a lot of it is social media. It gives a lot of people like confidence to be hateful. I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw someone just going on a rant about how much they hate Mexicans. And I'm like, who the hell hates Mexicans? These are people who give you free chips and salsa at all their restaurants. <laughs> I love Mexicans, we need more of that in the United States, right? Mexicans, these are people who gave guacamole to the United States. They brought guacamole to this great country of ours. Love them. Hold on, I almost burped. Anyway, I woke up. I was almost gonna let one go right there. No, I love guacamole. Here's the thing about guacamole that's amazing. It's consistently awesome wherever you go. It really is. I think it's the most consistent of all the appetizers. Fun fact, best guacamole I ever had in my entire life was at an Irish pub. Seriously. And I remember when I ordered it, my friends were like, Dude, are you seriously ordering guacamole at an Irish pub? I'm like, yeah. Who do you think's making it back there? <laughs> it's not a guy named Patrick, I'll tell you that much. It's a dude named Carlos. He's on his third shift and he's still killing it. The guy just... The guy could cook in like seven different ethnicities. It's awesome. That is why I like talking about the differences among people. I like talking about race and stuff like that. I think the more we laugh at each other, the more we can be honest and everyone will get along a lot better. That's my theory, or I think it's true. Now like white people, look, I'm the whitest person in this room by far. I'm super white. This, I'm not wearing a shirt. This is my torso. I'm a very white guy. And because of that, I can admit, I can admit that white privilege is a thing. A lot of white people don't want to admit that. And I'm not saying that you didn't grow up hard either, but white privilege is a thing, right? But. Every time I get sunburned, I'm like, this shit evens out. This feels like a fair trade off to me. Sure, I was born with all this opportunity, but I gotta prepare to enjoy a nice day. You know how fucked up that is? When it's 85 and sunny, I got all my Hispanic and black friends being like, yeah, let's go outside. I'm like, the sun's trying to kill me. You know, like, it's not fair. But things tend to balance out, like my black friends. You, unfortunately, have to be very careful on authority. I'm not saying that's right, I'm not saying that's fair. But you're also known for having huge dicks. Fucking evens out. It feels like a pretty good trade-off right there. You talk to Asian dudes, Asian dudes are said to have small dicks, but be great at math. You talk to an Asian guy, they'll be like, fuck math, give me the big dick. I'd rather have the big dick one. Please, can we switch? I want the big dick one. Nobody uses calculus, everybody uses a big dick. Can we please just... Switch it out. But I mean it though, I want, I want my comedy to bring people together. You know, so I wanna talk about, I wanna find the things that do bring us together. Transgender people is a big topic of conversation these days, right? And I, I, believe, I believe it's totally plausible. Like there's been medical cases in which people have been born with the organs on the outside of their body. So why wouldn't a female brain be born in a male body? I think it's totally, I, I believe it, you know? And uh, I actually read this cool statistic that over 91% 
of uh, men that transition into becoming women, when they go for the breasts, size D or above. <laughs> 91% size D or above. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because it shows we're all just superficial, right? They probably told that plastic surgeon, let's fucking have him leaking out. If we could do that, let's... And that makes perfect sense to me. I'm sure it goes the other way, too. If you're transitioning from female to male, you're not going to give yourself a little dick. You're going to tell that doctor, hey, let's swing some pipe down there, huh? Can we make it look scary? Can we add some extra veins? I'm going to be playing basketball with some friends at the Y. I want to freak them the fuck out in that locker room. Can we do that? I want to be like, bam, what's up? Who's passing me the ball? Let's go. Boom, right? Lisa's a Larry. Let's fucking play, right? You know? I gotta be careful. That shit could get me canceled. I gotta be careful. Yeah, that word. Cancel culture. People talk a lot about that now. And people argue whether or not it's a thing or whatever. I don't know. I think there might be some truth to it. I don't like the idea of canceling individuals because I still believe in the individual. I believe people can become better. They can make amends. They can evolve. All that kind of stuff. I am in favor of canceling certain types of people. Um, obviously, I don't mean anything racially, of course, but like certain like subsects of the population that we have to deal with that are annoying. Um, anyone who doesn't move their grocery cart over enough for you to slip by, <laughs> gone. They gotta go. You know these people where you're like, if I could just, can you just like an inch over, if you could just, and then they're just like, and you're like, what your fucking cart do? Piece of shit, what the fuck, man? It's our fucking narrow aisles, you dipshit. Can we, ugh. Slow people, anyone slow. Not mentally, I'm not evil, but like, people who just move slowly. The escalator's not a ride, fucking move. Like, come on, man. We all have places to go. Two people turn on a yellow light, let's do this. People who don't gun it at a yellow light. I don't. I was in the back seat of a car once so my friend was driving and uh, his, his girlfriend was shotgun. He didn't gun it through a yellow. They broke up three days later. And I don't know if that's specifically related to why. Mo most people said, no, they've been having problems. I'm like, that was definitely the nail. Because so, they were at that point in the relationship where it's like, should we get married? And I think she saw that and she's like, I can't raise kids with someone who's not gonna step on the gas on a yellow light. Like, he clearly doesn't know how to satisfy women, right? That's, that's, that correlates. I think that correlates. Another type of person I want to get rid of is uh, these white hipster guys, you know the type, you know, flannel beard, the works, who, uh, who preach diversity. And look, I'm all about diversity, but I don't like the way they preach it. Because they're all about diversity, and yet they only have one black friend, and their black friend has no black friends. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear about it from you. You got to go. It's like you found the one black guy that other black guys were like, you fucking have that guy. Fuck that guy. I don't even like that guy. <laughs> that guy's got to go. 2020, an election season. God, I don't like politics anymore. I used to talk about them a lot, and I think being a political comedian is kind of boring these days. No, because we all have like 24 hour news networks. We have Twitter, we have the internet. So when a political comedian goes on a show at nine o'clock and starts going, you see what happened here? Everyone's like, yeah, we did see it. We saw it happen. And yeah, we came here to forget that bullshit and you just keep talking about it. It's boring, it's they're always the same stuff. So if I'm gonna talk about it, I wanna give both sides shit if I could. Democrats, you're not moving to Canada. Shut the fuck up about that, okay? <laughs> Every four years, it's like if so-and-so gets elected, I'm moving to Canada, and no one ever does it. No one ever follows through. And it's a lazy-ass threat, because Canada is right there. It's so close. It's right there. I could see if the threat was, I'm moving to India. That's a hike. India's far away, and I, I get your hesitation. And I don't think Indians like little white bitches anyway, so I don't know if I want you, specifically. But I will say this. It does make sense as a threat from Democrats, because a big thing Democrats, Democrats want is universal health care. It's like a big thing. They want free health care in the United States. Canada, right there, has universal health care. So it does make sense to be like, I'm just going to go there. I get it. Now, my Republican friends, if we were to get universal health care, you've got fucking nowhere to go. There's nowhere for you to go, because every major country has it. You know, I remember seeing Sean Hannity on Fox News. He was like, if Bernie Sanders gets elected, I'm moving to Ireland. 
Ireland has all the shit Bernie wants already. They have it <laughs> currently. Ireland has free healthcare, free education. Ireland made gay marriage legal by the popular vote, which means Irish people actually went to the polls. They're like, gay marriage, more weddings, more open bar. Let's fucking do this, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know why I make them do a big check mark when they vote. It just seems like the, how they would do it. So when I hear my Republican friends be like, I tell you what, if we get free health care, I'm like, you, you're stuck. You're stuck. You're going to take it. I did some homework. I did some homework for my Republican friends. There is one country that still doesn't have free health care. Haiti. Haiti doesn't have free health care. But trust me, Republicans are going to hate Haiti. It's black people who speak French. <laughs> the worst nightmare. Boom. Heads are going to explode. It's going to scare them. But again, I've been talking a lot about society and whatnot. I honestly believe this, that the world is a much better place than we believe. I've traveled this country over the last couple of years from Alaska to Florida, New York to California, and people are out there having a good time. They're being decent to each other. And obviously things are not great. Things could always be better, but it's always been like that. Things could always be better. And I think every year things do get better. We come along way and all that. I just think these news networks and like social media websites, they're just trying to scare the shit out of people. So everyone just stays inside, watches their you know, TV shows and all that kind of stuff, orders shit off of Amazon so they never leave the house, just more money, you know? I don't have a lot of conspiracy theories. It's the only one I have, and I think it's true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it brings out the worst in people. I saw someone tweet. I saw someone tweet the other day, America has never been more divided. That was their tweet. America has never been more divided. Did you forget about the Civil War dipshit? Did you miss that one? <laughs> Did you skip third grade? How do you not remember... You didn't see the Ken Burns documentary, Glory with Denzel, great movie. You didn't see any of that. A lot of coverage on that war. <laughs> Never been more divided. What about the 1960s? The 1960s were way more divided than right now. In the 1960s, we had major political assassinations. That was the 60s. And that's the craziest thing to me about the last 10 years. With all the civil unrest, there has not been one major political assassination, not one. And it just makes me think to myself, how lazy are millennials, you know? <laughs> I'm going on a march. Why don't you march your ass into a gun store and get some real change accomplished, huh? As long as you're good looking, we'll sell one to you. I don't know, right? We'll hook you up. I used to, I actually used to make fun of millennials a lot. And then I found out I was one. <laughs> and now I think we're just grossly misunderstood. I think... <laughs> I think, I think we're pretty good, you know? <laughs> but that's the thing, though. That's been going on throughout the history of time. That always cracks me up when people like, want to shit on millennials like they're the worst. Every generation throughout the history of time has always dumped all over the newest generation. And it cracks me up with millennials because look, look at them. With their selfies and their dick pics. Yeah, because that technology didn't exist for you. <laughs> when the copy machine was first created, everyone was taking copies of their ass. Everybody. <laughs> Just sitting on the copier at an office party. Like, ah. You don't think Lincoln would have taken dick pics if that was available, huh? <laughs> Text him to his boyfriend. You know, he would have done all that. <laughs> yeah, people say, I love this one too. I heard this a lot. They go, these millennials, they're so lazy. I was at a bar once, this old guy was just spouting off. He's like, these millennials are so lazy, they don't even go to the bank anymore. Yeah. Instead, they just deposit checks on their little phone, right? And I love it. Old people love doing that. They like to say little in front of some. They go, what are you, what are you playing your little video game? Huh? Huh? What are you on your little phone, right? You, your little college debt? Is that what you're doing? Huh? Right? And I was like, wait, wait, you think that's lazy? I'm like, dude, I think you have laziness and efficiency confused. I think that's what it is. Because all these old dudes are old people in general. And look, there's some here, you guys are great, all right? But <laughs> they always say they want the next generation to have things better than they do, but as soon as the next generation does have it, they're just like, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> These kids, they don't know how good they had it. <laughs> they got porn on their phones? They got porn in their pocket. How do they go out to the woods and jerk off the shapes? What the fuck?
So again, I wanted to say, I'm like, dude, all right, let's break it down. Because you think these millennials are lazy for not going to the bank. I go, all right, you'd rather have them get in a car, bus, train, whatever their mode of transportation is, right? Go to the bank, you know, get in there, fill out that little slip, go in that little fucking maze of a line, do that shit, right? <laughs> Hand the slip over to a bank teller who even she's like, dude, you don't have an app for this by now? Why are you here, right? I got this job for free lollipops so I could be high at work. Why are you here? <laughs> Come on, man. I go, you rather all that and then just take the check, put it on a table, take a picture of the check, bam, money in the bank. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, you need to die. You just need to die. Because you're slowing down progress. You know what I mean? Because I think about it, I'm like, that guy votes. You know, like that. You ever think about that? We have to, you have to be at least 18 to vote, but you could vote up until your death. I remember voting in a couple primaries ago just a primary, and I had just gotten into the booth, and all of a sudden everyone started cheering, all these election judges were like, yeah, yeah, and I look, and this woman must have been like 190. She starts caning in, and everyone's like, everyone, this is Gladys, some old name I'm making up because I can't remember the original one. Uh, she's been voting at the same polling location for 89 years and all this kind of stuff, and I was just like, okay, well, who's she voting for though, right? Because she is clearly knocking on heaven's door, and for all I know, she's spiteful as hell. She's just gonna walk in there and be like, Hitler. You're like, I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> she can be the deciding vote to fuck over everybody. Like, no, you gotta cap that shit. People shouldn't, people should be done voting at like 56 or something. I don't, like, you can't, voting forever. No, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. In 2012, the states of Washington and Colorado legalized marijuana for recreational use which was a good move, it was a very good move. Potheads, what's up? And both those states just had money pouring in from the revenue. I mean, their governors are doing Scrooge McDuck dives into gold. They were like, they, all, they had new money for education, crime was down, which makes a lot of sense. You can't steal shit when you can't find your car. Like, you know, like all like, there's no getaway, right? Like, so in the business world, if two businesses would have made a major shift like that and reaped all those awards, every other business would be like, we gotta do that yesterday, let's do that now. But here we are, eight years later, and only about 10 states have done it. We still have about another 40 states that don't have recreational marijuana legal. And you know why? Because old people vote. <laughs> Young people don't, because you're all too fucking stoned to show up or something. <laughs> but all these old people vote. So there's some little old lady in West Virginia who's like, no, no, I don't like marijuana, no. <laughs> My nephew smokes it, and then his eyes are all red and funny, and no, I don't like it. And then he eats all my cookies. No, I don't like it. My husband smoked reefer in Korea, and he came back smelling like Asian pussy. I do not like it. No. That's, that's a pro-Asian vagina joke, by the way. That's pro. That's a pro. That's a pro-Asian pro vagina joke. That's like, that, that means it's good. I mean, you know what I mean? Because if it smelled bad, he would have washed it off by the time he got home. But it smells good, so he was like, no, this is... And he was so, that's, you know. Well, no, out of the corner of my eye, I see him consoling her. I'm like, I didn't say anything bad. I didn't say anything bad. What are you, what are you talking about? That's what I should call this. I didn't say anything bad. I didn't say... Yeah, so those people vote and they're just slowing down all this progress. It's nuts to me. Got it, we got it. Yeah, there's gotta be a voting cap to that shit. And the generational stuff always cracks me up because people will try to argue with me. They're like, no, no, the mill millennials are really the worst. And I go, but again, I have to remind them, every generation got shit. And then they try to come at me with this. They go, not the greatest generation. The greatest generation didn't get any. I'm like, real quick, we all have to remind ourselves. The greatest generation, you know, that depression ending, World War II winning generation, they weren't called that at the time. That was a nickname given to them decades later. How obnoxious would it have been if in 1940, a bunch of 22-year-olds were walking around going, we're the greatest generation, man. Yeah. I'm gonna go take my best gal out on a date. I don't know how they talked back then, you know. 
No, I'll tell you this. Do you know who hated the greatest generation? Here's who hated the greatest generation. Their parents. Their parents yeah. hated them. Yeah. <laughs> Their mothers were like, oh, he could storm the beach in Normandy, but he can't call me on a Sunday. Ooh. <laughs> what a fancy boy. Mm. Another thing they say, they say millennials are weak because they get participation trophies. I hear that one a lot. These millennials with their participation trophies. But let me remind everybody, millennials didn't choose that, right? No fourth grader would sign themselves up for Little League going, I expect a trophy at the end of this. Uh, if I'm gonna be dedicating my time three, four nights a week, I want some hard plastic to show my effort. No, their parents chose that. So wouldn't the parents be the shitty generation for raising shitty grandkids? Let's not stop there. I set, fuck that up. Wouldn't the parents be the shitty generation for raising shitty kids? Let's not. What about the grandparents? What were they doing raising such shitty kids they went in to raise shitty grandkids, huh? It's endless. No, I'll tell you about a shitty generation. A weak generation, that is. The 1880s, super weak. They were easily the weakest generation. No, for real. I looked up the infant mortality rate of the 1880s, embarrassingly high, just super high. Babies back then were like, I'm born, life's too hard, I'm dead. Like that quickly. It's a bunch of weak ass babies, you know? So. For anyone offended by that joke, I'm sorry that you knew babies who perished in the 1880s. I'm sorry. I didn't think that through. I'm pro baby, relax. I noticed there's a lot of like people in their 20s here. And that reminds me, I have to say this, because I was talking about millennials. There is a difference between millennials in our 30s versus millennials in their 20s. All the millennials in our 30s, we're just kind of like walking around going, music was better in the 90s. Like, that's like our thing, you know? <laughs> All the millennials in their 20s are like, I'm on Molly and I do butt stuff. Like, that's them. <laughs> I'm serious. I know some of you are looking at me like, any, you older people don't know this, but anyone under the age of 28, it's just, you know, ecstasy and anal. That's all, that's their whole thing, right? Just MDMA and licking ass. That's their whole thing. For real, it's, and look, hey, more power to you, whatever gets you off, I'm happy for you. But you gotta understand, that area is not for everybody, okay? That is not for everybody. That is an area of heavy consent. I have a friend of mine, he's like 37 years old, he recently got divorced. A Bunch of our buddies were like pushing him, we're like, dude, do the dating apps, man. They're not like looked down upon anymore. Everyone's on these dating apps, go for it, right? So we're like trying to get him back out there. He uh, like matched up with a 26 year old. So he's like, oh my God, it's like a decade between us. I can't, that's weird, right? We're like, no, go for it, dude. It's not that big a deal. No one minds mid thirties, mid twenties, basically go for it. So all right, goes on the date with her. We see him the next day. He tells us, hey man, things were going pretty good. Pretty good, we went back to her place. Started fooling around, you know? Pants came off, I'm thinking, awesome. And then he tells us, she skips the dick and balls, went right for his asshole, and that son of a bitch was not ready. He was not ready. <laughs> that poor bastard had a look on his face like he saw a ghost, and he was like, dude, had I known that was on the menu, I would have rethought dinner plans for the last month. I would have rethought everything I ate the last month. I'm like, you need to talk about that ahead of time, okay? And how brave is this woman, right? <laughs> Maybe it's the molly that just makes her go, I'm gonna lick it, right? I don't know. Because good Lord, I thought about this. Like if my wife ever came up to me, like, you know, I read in Cosmo and all this, and she's like, you know, it's supposed to be this amazing sensation and everyone's talking about it. I, I'd, I'd like to do that for you. I'd be like, Phew. all right, all right, hold on. Um, I am going to, um, I'm gonna take an 18 hour shower. <laughs> Then I'm gonna take a bath with all the soaps. All the soaps. I'm gonna go to the store and I'm gonna say, I'd like to purchase all the soaps. And I'm gonna really soak in that. And then the answer is still no, because I, I love you too much. And, um, and my dick and balls are right there. They're right there. And they're fine. They're a lot of fun, you know what I mean? I don't need sugar on my cereal. You know, I don't need that. It's, it's fine out the box, you know what I mean? I don't like this idea that anybody could be a model. I don't like that shit. You guys notice that? It's a new thing everyone's trying to push. Where it's like, oh, anybody could be a model now. Isn't that, isn't that great? Anybody, like, no. Hot people are models, and that is it. 
And I'm not body shaming up here. Some of my best friends are very overweight. I love them. I'm not, and I'm saying, if you, you know, be happy with your body. I think everyone should be happy with their body. But you also have to understand, not everyone should be a fucking model, right? I definitely shouldn't be a model. I'm incredibly pasty. I got an in-cave chest. Surprisingly puffy nipples. Like, I should not be a model. But there's this whole new way where it's like, no, beauty and everybody. I like, oh, Sports Illustrated had the first plus-size model. By the way, she was hot. She was hot. Like, the curves were all there. The tits came out here. The ass came out here. She was a little thick, but she was still hot. That needs to be the thing. If they start putting ugly people in bathing suits, we've lost civilization. It's all over. <laughs> like, hot homeless people. It's going to fuck up everyone's <laughs> sense of reality. Can't have that. It never goes the other way, either. It's never like, you know, we don't cheer on dumb people. Because there's still this notion that anybody could be smart, but not anybody could be hot. You ever hear that? They're like, they just get by with their looks. Yeah, you get by with what you can. You never go to someone going, this guy just gets by with his brains. Yeah. <laughs> Ugly as sin, but a smart guy, right? Would it be like, no, everyone's just like, well, yeah, you're supposed to get by with your brain. No, you get by with what you have. That's how we've survived as a, as a species as long as we have, right? But it's never the other way around. I want that to be a movement. I want them to be like, well, so what if he's dumb? Why can't he go on the space shuttle? Why can't he, huh? What the fuck, NASA? You're brain shaming, NASA. It's not his fault he's not smart. I don't like this. Everyone's, you know, fucking stupid. I'm gonna test how cool you guys really are as an audience. You guys have been a lot of fun too, by the way. Give yourselves a round of applause. You guys have been great. By a round of applause, how many people here have had sex with a pregnant woman? Let's hear it. <laughs> just, uh, just a couple heroes walk amongst us. Just a couple. Because I was having sex with pregnant women, I didn't even get pregnant because I'm a good guy like that, okay? I'd see them at a grocery store. I'm like, you need help with that? And they're like, no, I can reach. I'm like, no, you need help with that. And I point to their <laughs> vagina. And again, my wife didn't mind because these are single mothers to be and I'm just a good person like that, right? It's, it's a humanitarian effort at that point. <laughs> Side note, the women who are giving me dirty looks, clearly a fucking joke, okay? <laughs> clearly a joke. There's some women looking at me like, there's no way she's cool with that. Like, it's fucking. Here's the thing about having sex with a pregnant woman. It's great, right? It's great. Um, gets more difficult along the way. Um, you know, there's really only a couple positions you could do. And um, I think you could do more, but I think they're being lazy sometimes. Um, you could lift that like a little higher. Let's not, all right? But no, and honestly, sex with a pregnant woman is great. But I did have one problem with it. I'm not sure if the other people in the room who've had sex with pregnant women have had this problem. Um, the issue I had was this. Uh, I didn't know where to come. There's really no classy way to say that. I didn't know where to finish. I didn't know where to. Because in my brain, in my brain, I'm like, I can't come inside her because that's the baby's home now. Okay, that, that unit's being rented out. And um, I respect renters' rights. So... So it's like, what do I do? What do I do? Do I pull out, come on the sheets? Guys, she's pregnant. She's got enough laundry to do, all right? <laughs> I, can't, I can't add a load to her load literally, you know? <laughs> That's also literally a dick move when you think about it. <laughs> no, so I, I did the only thing I could do. I pulled out and I came all over the bump. And that's just like egg in someone's house. <laughs> hey, I'm Joe Kilgallen. You guys were a lot of fun tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks. One more time to Joe Kilgallen, everybody.